So far in lecture, we have considered disturbances to the system that come in before the control input and go feed directly into the plant. And we've considered those to be what we would call polynomial disturbances, steps, ramps, parabolas, and so on. And so we want to ask two questions. First, uh, what do these disturbances actually represent uh, in, in a physical sense? And also, what other kinds of disturbances might we try to consider? Let's look at the example of a spacecraft in orbit uh, with a simple drag term. So imagine a uh, spacecraft, and I'm going to use a nice sophisticated spacecraft here, and there would be some velocity term, and there's going to be a net drag on the spacecraft that's not going to be quite at the center because of the change in density of the atmosphere over the height of the spacecraft. And then finally, there would be at the center some control moment. So I have a velocity uh, vector or speed. I have a drag term. And then there's some height here, uh, which would correspond to the effective height of the drag term. So summing moments about the center is equal to j omega dot, or j theta double dot, where theta is defined uh, positively. And here, and uh, j is the inertia of the spacecraft. We know that this would be minus d times h. There's a drag term. And then we'd have plus the control moment. So that control moment could come from a reaction wheel or CMG or some other uh, momentum control device. We can find the transfer function for this particular system. And I'm going to solve for, um, notice this is equal to theta double dot. So I'm going to solve for s squared theta of s is equal to minus dh over j plus mc, and this is now of s, over j. Finally, I can solve for theta of s as being minus dh over j s squared plus mc of s over j s squared. And here, d could be constant. It could be a function of t and then now a function of s. But we'll go ahead and leave it as a constant for now. Go ahead and look at the block diagram for this system. Because it's not obvious that there's a transfer function here if d is a function of t and then a function of s. And in fact, this is what we call a multi-input system. So we would say, all right, I've got 1 over j s squared. And if that block is here, then the thing coming out of that is going to be theta of s. And the thing that goes into that would be the sum of uh, minus d times h and mc. So I would have an add, I'd have d times h, and put a minus sign there, and then also have mc there. And this is of s. Now notice that this system is not uh, controlled. So if we go ahead and add a uh, control law, say c of s, and that's going to generate our moment. We take some feedback, and then we're going to have a commanded angle, and we're going to go ahead and generate an error and feed that into our control law. That's a sum. Here, let's, let's assume that we have the objective of setting or commanding or keeping the uh, spacecraft's angle with respect to some frame equal to zero degrees. And we want to regulate that. So this becomes a pretty standard regulation problem. So now if we calculate the error for this function, we would see that it would be minus 1 over j s squared over 1 plus c of s times 1 over j s squared times w of s, which is just d h over s, because it turns on at a particular time. So we end up, after we simplify, with minus d h over j s squared plus c s. Now, the steady state error is going to depend on what we do with our controller. Because for steady state error, 
to be calculated using the final value theorem, we need stability. So if I just have a proportional controller, notice the roots are purely imaginary, and I'm not going to get stability. So I need at least what we call a proportional derivative controller. So let's go ahead and look at that example. Let's let our control law be given by KD times S plus KP. So I have a derivative term and a proportional term. Go ahead and write down the error. The error is now going to be minus 1 over JS squared all over 1 plus KDS plus KP times 1 over JS squared. And then that all gets multiplied by W, which is DH over S. So if we look at the steady state error, we have to take the limit of S times all of this, and I'm going to simplify. I have minus D H over S all over J S squared plus K D S plus K P. And now take that limit as S goes to zero. These two guys cancel each other out. And we're left with minus D H over K P. Notice this only goes to zero when K P goes to infinity, just as before. So how do we go ahead and get rid of this state error? Remember before when we looked at proportional derivative control laws, we saw that the proportional term gave us uh, you know, what the absolute error was, and the derivative term gave us this idea of how fast we were approaching the final value. The idea of the integral is to actually integrate the steady state error out so that we, as that error accumulates, because it's just this constant value, that integral term will get larger and we'll try to force the system back towards the, the final value that we desire. So instead, let's go ahead and let our control law be given by kp plus ki over s, so that's like an integrator, plus kd times s. Now this is what's known as a PID or a PID control, proportional integral derivative. Go ahead and make the substitution. We see that e of s ends up being minus 1 over j s squared all over 1 plus kp plus ki over s plus kd times s, all of that times 1 over j s squared times the disturbance, which is dh over s. Simplifying, we get minus dh over s all over j s squared plus kp plus ki over s plus kds. Now, we don't like the fact that I have this 1 over s, or this ki over s in the denominator, so we go ahead and multiply both numerator and denominator by s, which cancels the s in the numerator, but it also raises the order of the denominator by a power of s and also cancels out this s. So finally we end up with an error of minus d times h all over j s to the third plus k d s squared plus k p s plus k i. So notice we, we fundamentally changed this error transfer function. Before we had a 1 over s in the numerator, or you could think of it as a pure integrator. Here now we've gotten rid of that term. So to make sure that the system is actually uh, stable and that we can apply the final value theorem, we'll go ahead and use Routh Hurwitz. And Routh Hurwitz, remember, we form by taking s to the third, s squared, s to the one, and then s to the zero power. Draw out our columns and rows. Go ahead and populate. We have j and then kp and then zero. We have kd and then ki and then zero. This is going to be term b1 and then we're always going to end up with the last term of the polynomial down there. So b1 is going to be kp times kd minus j times ki all over kd. For stability, j is positive so because it's a inertia term. That means that kd also has to be positive. And 
we also need that ki has to be positive. And over here, this has to be then greater than zero, this whole term. And so we can multiply through by kd and uh, simplify and solve for kp, which says that kp then has to be greater than j times ki over kd. And this system will be stable. Stability is great, but now let's see what about the steady state error. What happens? Well, we can go ahead and calculate the steady state error as we've done before by taking the limit. So we take the limit of s times minus dh over js cubed plus kds squared plus kps plus ki. And we go ahead and take this as, sorry, as s goes to zero. We can go ahead and now take our limit. Now, notice what happens here. I can let s go to zero. All these terms go to zero, zero. But this term, ki, is left over. And this term in the numerator goes to zero. So I'm just left with zero over ki. Well, that's just zero. So yay, our system worked. We can go ahead and see how we can do this uh, numerically using MATLAB and Simulink. The disturbance that we just looked at was a type zero disturbance, or a step input. And we could look at type 1, type 2, and so on. But what about other kinds of disturbances? Say a vibration. Or, say, noise. How do we deal with these kinds of disturbances? These seem much more realistic to us in a lot of cases, because we know that most systems are going to have noise associated with them. And by noise, we mean you know a random input to the plant. So over time, that would just be you know, some squiggly line. How do we deal with that? Well, it turns out we need more tools to do the analysis. And there is a branch of, of control theory um, known as uh, LQR and LQG. And we also come up with this idea of a Kalman filter. And the Kalman filter is very useful for looking at noise disturbances. When it comes to vibrations of known frequency, we can use other uh, ideas known as, say, disturbance accommodating control or whatnot. But we need to understand, to do this in a, in a, in a good way, we need to understand uh, some state space representations.